In this lecture, we're going to look at the engineering disciplines that are available to you. Before we do that, we have to explain what engineering is. So engineering is the application of math and scientific principles to better or improve life, which is a fancy way of saying that engineers apply what they know or what society at large knows to solve a problem. There are many, many, many fields of engineering. I once, when I taught gateway to technology, I had my sixth graders do an A to Z activity to try to find an engineering field from A to Z, and they were successful at that. So there are many different types of engineers. They break down into the big four. And pretty much everything, all the other disciplines are derivative, a combination or extension of one or more of these fields. So the big four are chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Let's look first at chemical engineering. Many times this is shortened to chem-e, so they shorten that to chem-e. So a chemical engineer applies scientifically the principles of chemistry, physics, and engineering to design an operation of plants for the production of materials that undergo chemical changes during the processing. So that is one, it's probably more than, more than half. Um, they're not directly involved with the initial creation of the chemical they are trying to make, but they are involved in scaling it up and making the production of that product efficient and safe. So for an example, if we have a drug, a new drug to treat, I don't know, irregular heartbeat, the chemical engineer may not have been involved in the initial group doing the research and that, that participated in the clinical trial. However, as the clinical trial process gets further along and the drug is approved at different stages, then a chemical engineer may be brought in to create larger and larger quantities. And then as that drug is finally approved and you go to mass production, a chemical engineer will ensure that the productions of small batches or productions of millions of pills um, are safe and the same and efficient uh, so the plant doesn't waste money and the customer gets the same pill um, through the processes in that plant. Chemical engineers are also responsible for new and improved products and processes. So chemical engineers can do a little bit of mixing of science and engineering. They <clears throat> can do new fuel for rockets. They can work in medicine. They can develop new plastics. A lot of times this is sometimes combining two or more items. Sometimes this is slightly modifying other chemicals in order to get slightly different properties. But that is chemical engineering. So the second of the big four is civil engineering, shortened to CE, just the letter CE. They are typically planning, designing, and supervising the construction of facilities both in the public and private sectors. So it's usually related around constructing a usually typically larger structure of some kind. So they can vary in nature, they can vary in size and scope. I uh, don't know exactly why there's space satellites there. I don't know uh, the launch facilities, sure. That can very well involve a civil engineer. Offshore structures such as oil wells, bridges, buildings, highways, transit systems such as subways uh, and uh, the trolley lines out in San Francisco, maintaining dams that provide hydroelectric power, airports, irrigation projects, tunnels, skyscrapers. One of the most important things that civil engineers have done for society was the treatment and distrib distribution of water, both wastewater storm drainage, and fresh drinking water. And civil engineers in many ways are responsible for saving millions if not billions more lives than a doctor ever has because they provide us with clean, fresh drinking water 
and they provide a mechanism to safely remove the waste that we generate. The third of the big three is electrical engineering, also called double E for EE, -E, double E. They are concerned, like you might think, about electricity in some way, shape, or form. They deal with the emotion of electron and metals. Though that's, that's generally a rule of thumb. When you look at some of the semiconductors, uh, some of the semiconductors don't involve metal of any shape or form, or it's combined with metal and maybe a ceramic. So they work is their work is largely focused on electrical systems of some sort. Now the examples I have here are all large electrical systems. They can also be smaller electrical systems. So you can have large electrical systems like that are found in dams. You can have motors and generators for power. You can also have much smaller like the motors um, that are in, that turn the the motors that you'll find in your car or electric in your hybrid cars you have electric motors that are much smaller you also have generators that recover energy from braking so that's also electrical engineer electrical circuits in buildings but also any electrical circuit in anything else usually has an electrical engineer electrical engineers can be involved in your phone your computer your cars your refrigerator anything that basically has a circuit board at some point an electrical engineer worked on it the last of the big four is mechanical engineering also known as ME ME for mechanical engineer they apply the principles of mechanics and energy to the design of machine and devices they are usually designed with devices that move, but they can be thermal designs as well as uh, such as uh, HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. They can also be involved in vibration analysis, which is how something performs when it's shaken. Think about a rocket launch and how the you have multiple vibratory forces acting upon that as it launches into the uh, into orbit lubrication so that you have two pieces moving against one another how do we lubricate those so we don't have unnecessary wear on those parts gears and bearing maybe I want to take something at one speed and change that speed or increase my torque or maybe I need to create a bearing surface that allows rotation such as the bearings that's in your car and you may have heard your families having the bearings changed on their car it's what allows the wheels to roll smoothly there are many more engineering dis disciplines now remember these are either derivative or combination of those big four so they're derivative of uh, or combination of civil engineering chemical engineering mechanical engineering or electrical engineering aeronautical engineering deals with flight and the movement of fluids inside the Earth's atmosphere. So aero, uh, I think it's Greek, and basically it means the air. They specialize in the following areas, aerodynamics, propulsions, controls, structure. So how does the vehicle move through the air, the fluid that is the Earth's atmosphere? We have aerospace and aeronautical engineering. So this is dealing with environments not found on Earth. Basically anything above uh, what's called the Kármán line. The Kármán line is the point where the Earth's atmosphere is so thin that to get any lift from wings, uh, you're basically at escape velocities. So aerospace and aeronautical, astronautical engineering deals with environments not found on Earth. They again have to deal with propulsion, materials, thermodynamics. So if you have a rocket that's shooting into space and generating massive amounts of thrust, it's also generating massive amounts of heat. So how do you deal with that heat? Also, vacuum is excellent for preserving or preventing the, f the transfer of heat. Um, so how do you get rid of heat efficiently once you're in space? Cryogenics. Large rockets, usually with liquid fuel, 
that is cooled, such as liquid oxygen, cooled very, very, very low temperature. So that's cryogenics, navigation, cosmic radiation. How do we harden the devices that we send up from the radiation so they don't malfunction or cease functioning? Agriculture engineering. So we live in Kentucky. We have quite a number of farms around us and the University of Kentucky has an agriculture engineering program, but it basically blends engineering knowledge with soil systems, land management, and environmental control. There are five specialty fields. There's soil and water, there's food, power machinery, structures, and electric power generation. Now that's not electric power generation for like a large dam, but that's electrical power generation for a farm. Because you can do some very cool things like take manure, um, which you wouldn't think would be cool. Um, but you can take that, capture it, generate it with the decomp decomposition, creates methane. And then that can be used to drive um, uh, a turbine to give you electricity. So architectural engineering. It works with architects focusing on structural integrity and safety of the design. So if you think of architects who focusing um, on the aesthetics and the beauty and the usability and keeping people happy while they work or use that building, then the architectural engineer is going to work alongside the architect, but they're going to focus on making sure that the building is safe that it can withstand all the forces that are imposed on it, all the furniture that's loaded into it, all the people that use it every day, the wind loads, maybe they're in an earthquake zone, maybe they're in a flood zone. So all those forces acting upon that building that they're able to successfully build a safe building. They are also the architectural engineer, um, sometimes called structural engineers as well, We'll also focus on making sure that it's easy to be built for the construction crews, that they can check upon any faults or errors that may occur, and that also that it's efficient and um, max in maximizing the use of any money to build it. So it's cheap to build, not necessarily cheap as in not well made, but it is maximizing the use of those dollars. Um, structural engineering, like I just said, is very similar. Uh, the main concern is an architectural engineer is a little bit more concerned with aesthetics, where a structural engineer focuses solely on making sure the structure is safe and sound and, and integrated with the design. Automotive engineering. This is not just trucks and cars. It'd be tractors, bulldozers, motorcycles. Um, tiny diggers, which is what you see here. These are used to, you can take them, um, they're not as wide as a door, they're less than 36 inches, so you can drive them through a doorway and into where you need to work and only pair up maybe a small section of concrete, but you need machinery to, to help you do that. So you can use that small digger in that way. They address engine design, structural design, tire design. They look at the entire car so how do all the components fit together they also look at individual pieces so maybe if you're an automotive engineer you might specialize in cooling and so therefore you design AC systems air conditioning systems heating systems maybe you only focus on tires and how the tire interacts with the road when it's wet when it's hot when it's cold Biomedical engineers, they bridge engineering, physical and life sciences, and identifying and solving medical and health related problems. They generally break down into bioengineering, medical engineering, and clinical engineering. Computer engineering, it's how to design computers and organize computers. Um, both from the hardware side, which are the physical parts. How do I lay out? What's the best, most efficient way to lay out all the transistors and the chips and the circuit patterns? 
all the way to the software that is then installed into those physical devices. So computer engineer hand, computer engineering handles both of those. So the largest consumer of computers today is the automotive industry. Fun fact. Industrial engineering. It's the design, improvement, installation of integrated systems of people, materials, and energy to produce a product at the lowest possible cost. This fo industrial engineers focus on designing systems for the manufacture of products. They will take anything that happens in the plant and use people and processes to efficiently build whatever item they've been asked to build can be raw material fed into machines to be injection molded to make a plastic part. It could be the workforce that operates the machinery. Do they have a tool that allows them to install these six screws very quickly and easily so that they don't over tighten and break it or that they don't leave out a screw? They also deal with removal of the finished products, getting those stacked into pallets get those packed out and put into trucks and sent via FedEx. They also maintain the machinery so it's working when they need it or they deal with the people who maintain the machinery. And then they also analyze the manufacturing processes for things such as cost and the time to produce and maybe the ergonomics so that if I sit here all day for eight hours and I assemble this, then I'm not going to develop serious metal conditions medical conditions because I've been assembling those for so long. Manufacturing engineering is very similar to industrial engineering, but it's more of the design of the manufacturing facility for a product or products. So they deal a little bit more. They also deal within the plant, just like the industrial engineer. So if you're here in Scott County, we have Toyota. They, the manufacturing engineering will are the people that lay out the manufacturing lines so they do the physical plant layout they install and maintain or direct the people that maintain uh, new machinery or existing machinery that's in that line they purchase and rent facilities when it's needed they also purchase and rent equipment as it is needed the manufacturing engineer also deals with packaging the product and also analyzing the packaging so that we know that when we ship it across the country or we fly it across the ocean to another country that the packaging protects the product and if it doesn't why and how can we fix that 